Red Ray Gun Limited presents The Benji and Nick Show Hondo Hondo Welcome <laughs> citizens of Hondo to the Hondo podcast Hondo Good, good morning Good afternoon Good day Good Hondo Good evening Good Honda <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to give you that goodness. Luckness. <laughs> oh, what are we talking about? a legal way what? of playing the game. What are, are we, we talking saying about? It? Well, we'll talk, we'll talk about that later, the Hondo business. <laughs> well, this is the Benji and Nick show, your number one. Yeah, but that uh, was the Loch Ness game. Is it it's a game? Not a, it's not a game. Oh, no. It's, it's all wrong. And what's it not about? It's not about chess. And it's not Loch about Loch Ness. Ness. Sorry, it's in Rome with Ness. Or indeed Rudolf Hess. <laughs> oh dear, yes. Uh, this is the Benji Nick Show, your number one vintage television podcast in the known world. That's right. So there are bits of the unknown world, which I'm sure there might be other vintage television podcasts talking no, about. No, I stuff think they're that, listening you know, to this one. I hope I so. Think. I hope they are. Uh, yeah. We talk about cult TV, <laughs> TV you might love, TV from the past you might hate, TV you might never have heard about. We talk about it, jest about it, play chess about it, and uh, see see what we, we okay. think about it. Not just that, but we're also joined by our good friends uh co-host shelly dean and of course sometimes but not always i don't believe today uh, jamie anderson son of the late great jerry anderson yes we can certainly reveal that uh, jamie anderson is a no show today no show he's on the moon isn't he this this, this time around that's right he's on moon base with gabrielle drake well, i couldn't think of worse places to be you know well, yeah or worse yeah. people to be with well quite well quite uh <laughs> In a moment, <coughs> sorry, clearing my throat. I'm not emotional. It sounds like I was choked up. <laughs> it's oh, so, be- so beautiful. <laughs> um, we'll be looking at your emails since podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Uh, once again, I would like to uh, uh, thank many of you who've subscribed to us on Patreon. It's enabling us to create all sorts of brilliant extra material and content. And it gives you a discount on merchandise at nicholasbriggs.com. If you want to go there, there are T-shirts and uh, mugs and things. Really worth a look. I mean, you know, even if you're not following us on Patreon, you might want to go to nicholasbriggs.com and have a look at some of the uh, exclusive Benji and Nick show stuff that you perfectly entitled to buy yes that was a plug uh, just Plugity a quick plug. shout out for neil allen happy, who's um, happy day yeah he's in the, the our good day tier uh, as you may know neil is a keen amateur planet invader still not quite got the hang of it having not quite yet achieved space travel but he's working on it yeah last time last time i heard uh, neil was trying to trying to get up there on a, on a penny farthing but uh, <laughs> i don't right, quite know yeah. how, how that panned out but i'm hoping neil's yeah, you know, know Neil's, Neil's mastered it soon, and there's a little chef midway if you're heading out to space. That's just great for a quick quick cup of tea. Mm, nice. Shall we get on with the emails? Yes. Well, they are emails sent to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Please get them in. It's always so much fun hearing from you all out there in the known world and and occasionally the unknown world. Um, yeah. To, to, to hear what, what is it about the unknown world? Why do you keep talking about it the unknown world? It intrigues me, Nick. It intrigues me. You don't me. know. It's unknown. But don't don't doesn't the thrill of adventure? Doesn't that thrill you? Don't you? The lure of the lure, I can't even say. I mean, the, what about ta 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 ta? How does that make you feel? <laughs> it makes me think of the longest day, the DVD that I've got downstairs and the Blu-ray. Oh yeah, in fantastic ta, 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 ta. high definition restored uh, fashion, which you should buy absolutely and unequivocally. Has it been I just restored? wanted to say it's been restored. It's gorgeous on Blu-ray. Yeah, it looks so so. I mean, it look. I'll be honest. It looked pretty good on the DVD release back in the day. Um, but it looks lovely. It's just beautiful. One of my favourite mm, films of all time. Good. John indeed has a long moustache. Um, shall I read out this first one or do you want to, Nick? I don't mind. I mean, it's appropriately. It's from Neil Allen, who we just gave a shout out to. Perhaps he's sending it from space. Yeah, it's entitled Christmas Heresy from Space. I made <laughs> that bit up. And he actually sent it on the 4th of uh, January in the year 1232. God, the, feet, quill no, pen. the past. Hmm. Hi guys, I know it might be regarded as heresy to say this, but I was more excited about the new Wurzel Gummidge TV show than the new Doctor Who this Christmas. Uh, was the, was the Wurzel Gummidge thing on? Yes, I watched it. It was lovely. It was. Uh, oh, I missed it. Is it still on the iPlayer? I expect so. Yeah, some of it was I'll filmed right down uh, my neck of the woods, down here, on the cliffs 
near where we lived, the Seven Sisters. It was absolutely gorgeous seeing old Wurzel and the saucy Nancy there. It was very light. Oh. I love I love that Wurzel series. I think it's impeccably well, it's, it's put together. It's just series one, it says. Um, right? You should expect it's part of series one. Hold on, let me go on the iPlayer for you. See, this Got, is... Yeah, series one, uh, The Scarecrow of Scatterbrook. Well, we know that one. Uh, two, The Green Man... And yeah, and three saucy Nancy. I can see. Oh, it right. it's not numbered three. It's weird. It just I just if you be... just type into um, the search on BBC iPlayer, just type in Wurzel. And it's, I have done. The first thing I'm, comes I'm up it. says Wurzel Gummidge saucy Nancy. Oh no! The first thing that came up on mine was Wurzel Gummidge. I think it's because it thinks I was halfway through watching The Green Man, which I wasn't. I must have watched it on something. I'm boring myself now. Anyway, uh, it was the highlight of this year's Christmas schedule for me, says Neil Allen. It had a very English folklore stroke timeless feel about it. And the settings and story were magical, particularly since the settings were near Benji Clifford. Just made that bit up. Mackenzie Crook really did make my Christmas. Did you watch it? Well, no, you did though. You really liked it, did you? Absolutely love it. I just think it's 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 very different to the Wurzel Gummidge series of the seventies, which of course I adore with yes. all my heart. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I love it to bits, uh, but it's different. But it has got a bit of a mystical wonderful imagination. Yes, <laughs> is <laughs> it? <laughs> Um, we haven't said that for ages. Oh. Raise his head. Raise, what wonderful imagination. Um, but the, the beautiful thing about it is it's very kind of, it's got that mystical quality and it's very relaxing. Mm. It's a mm. very relaxing, mm. you know, mm. even though it's a children's television programme. It has um, a... Mm. It has that little... Has a, has a wobbly a hand. Little, a little wobbly hand that does this up and down. But you no, know, it's brilliant. But of course, as well as that... Um, don't forget that as of today when we're recording this um, 7th of January if you're uh, I don't know if it's anywhere else in the world but if you're on Britbox in the UK you yes. can now watch um, the original uh, you might say uh, the the original Wurzel Gummidge series the whole thing the, I, I'm as far as I'm aware it's the whole it might let me check because yeah let know, us check now I know that they've got I know that they've got they would have at least one season but I will double check for you now Wurzel okay. Gummidge. No, yeah, the whole thing on there. Every, <gasps> every flipping episode. Oh, oh, oh. And as well as that Wurzel Christmas cheers, special, special which has been restored as well. Um, so you can watch that in HD. It's been restored. Um, oh, and they've got loads of other things as well. Uh, Maid Marion and the Merry Men and His Merry Men, which everybody says oh, is brilliant, which I've never yeah. seen. Um, it is good. It is Rent very a good. Ghost, which we have been asked to cover and we should cover. King Rollo, mm. which is obviously the best. All of Secret Service, uh, the Demon oh. Head Mark. Master, the all of press service. gang, all of Stingray, um, all of Stingray, all of Stingray is on there. Da, yes, da, 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 Stingray. Yeah, the whole lot, right up until <gasps> Aquanaut of the Year, oh. and um, all. What this is, I'm going to be honest. My actual favourite thing, yes, apart from yes. is is Mr. Ben, is on oh. there. All of Mr. Ben, and I what love Mr. Down. Ben. Just, just rubbish. I loved Mr. Ben and King <laughs> Rollo. I love I was, King Rollo as well, and all well, of Cat Weasel. Uh, all, oh. of, all of Cat Weasel. Rent a Ghost, which we should do. Uh, yeah, very yeah. exciting. The Borrowers as well. I never watched that. Um, no, I watched the film, good. obviously, but, but not that. Not, 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 just, not that. Not that. Not no, that. No. I did read the book when I was a kid. Um, uh, Neil continues, by the way, because we are still ankle deep in his uh, email, actually much further because this is the last paragraph uh, also again heresy to some but I prefer Peter Ustinov's Poirot to any other I've seen on screen good grief wow I heresy I rather like Albert Finney's um, one who <laughs> oh, interesting <laughs> um, <laughs> he, had, he had plaster of that was Paris very good inserted into his mouth and couldn't, couldn't speak <laughs> you can't remember <laughs> uh, anyway regarding as regards Neil, yes. Well, as regards Neil, thank you very much. <laughs> Sent from his iPhone, by the way. Just so you know. Yeah, I might have to watch a bit of old Eustonoff Poirot. Oh, well, we've got another short one here mm. from Adam Turnbull sent on the 25th of the 12th, 2020, in the year of our Lord, 1433, slap bang oh, in the Middle Ages there, yeah, simply yeah. says, just wondered if you thought about uh, talking about Nigel Neal's Beasts TV series. Some interesting odd episodes and very creepy. Yeah, do you know it? I do not. Yeah, look it up. It, it sounded is like fascinating. Lever, then. I do not. 
Um, I do not, Doctor. Beasts by Nigel Neal, a television series, 1976. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was an anthology of six self-contained episodes that featured the reoccurring theme of bestial horror. Yes. Released on ATV for the ITV network. Well, I love a bit of ATV. Stars Anthony Bate, Martin Shaw, Pauline Quirk. I love Pauline Quirk. She's, I bet she was really young in this, wouldn't she? She would have been, been yeah. It's 1976. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. Patrick McGee. Uh, yeah. Michael Kitchen. Brilliant. Yeah. Love it's uh, it's all slightly weird and creepy. And uh, I remember I remember quite liking it as a teenager because it was a little bit naughty. I think there was mm. some sexual content. But oh, you know, see. yeah, well, I the first sneakily episode watch. Is Pauline Quirk stars as a shop assistant with an unrequited uh, love for her manager who prompts a paranormal revenge. Oh, well, uh, Bernard Horsfall is in the final episode. That's pretty cool. Of course, he is. Yes, yeah, that's right. Sure. He'll be there talking in the way that Bernard Horsfall always used to speak. <laughs> well, we are fact. Well, we that time maybe, lords. Maybe one to check out. Yeah. Beasts. Definitely. Beasting. Well, we'll bear that in mind. Uh, little Cressels. This is from Nathan Martin, uh, sent on the 23rd of December 2020. So it was in the last. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Oh, I. Before the last podcast, we recorded the Big Finish podcast. <laughs> yeah, bless you. I recorded the Big Finish like podcast some... before this. Uh, I sneezed so many times before recording that throughout I felt I felt like I was. I, you know when you feel a bit ill after you've sneezed, like you feel like full of Never, cold. I've always felt. I know I feel excited. <laughs> No, Good you're right. Lord. Yeah, I do. I do actually. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was the feeling I had all the way through. Brought everything to the surface. Uh, anyway, Nathan, sorry about that. It was in the year 1633, um, which Ooh. is um, is that Queen Elizabeth or? Well, let's find out. 1633. I don't really want to know. Be precise as a year. Yeah. Common year of the Gregorian well, it could have been, it calendar. Could be James. Could have been James the first. Galileo Galilei arrives in Rome. For the no, Inquisition, uh, Charles the First is crowned King of the Scots. Oh, says Ha. Um, but not the King of England. I mean, he was probably the King of England as well. Charles the First is, of course, the the um, the monarch whose head got cut off at the end of the Civil War. Was Charles the uh, First? Yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. About fifteen years later, I want to say something like that. Anyway. And of course, this was the year Secretary of State Sir John Coke as well, who invented Coca Cola. He did. Did you know? uh, oh. Greetings, chaps, Damn. says Nathan Martin. As a huge fan of the works of Agatha Christie, I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts on Poirot. Well, you would have heard them uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think. This was a fantastic TV adaptation. And in my opinion, David Suchet is the definitive Hercule Poirot. Once you have watched him as Poirot, you are unable to watch anyone else play the part and take them seriously. These adaptations are so stylish, and there's a reason they are still repeated on TV today. Absolutely. What's, what's the reason? Doesn't say. Uh, I need to fill inter- in lunch hour. You see, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. It's interesting to note that this came from the same production company to give us the Jeremy Brent version of Sherlock Holmes, which could be argued to be the definitive screen version of that character, not the definitive audio version, though. Of course. Oh, thank you, Nathan. You're making <laughs> a little nice little comment about me there. I'm going to be doing some more of those Sherlock Holmes for Big Finish. I was Hopefully. recording with um, with Tom Baker couple of days ago and yes, he yes. was actually he was saying that he he thought that jeremy brett was just fantastic as sherlock holmes yes and he was also saying apparently he apparently he really cared about sherlock holmes and used to come on set with loads of books all about sherlock holmes yes. to which all the yes. people involved were just like the directors yes yeah, okay jeremy come on now we've got just to do this scene away. now Yes, Tom has spoken, uh, because Tom and I used to talk a lot about Sherlock Holmes, because both he and I have played the part. Yes. Yes, well, I famously failed in the part, you see. He did Baskervilles, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with him, he did fail in the part. Anyway, um, he he also did, uh, he likes to tell a story of of when he did a stage version of it, where he was also playing Moriarty, and he said he was touring in Ireland, and he heard some people in the audience saying, is it himself, or is it himself? (laughs) (laughs) 
That was one of his favourite stories. Uh, the supporting cast throughout the series w- were always superb, and special mention has to go to the wonderful Hugh Fraser as the constantly bewildered but faithful Captain superb. Hastings, who we decided was also a bit of a lech, wasn't he? It was ever, uh, actual so making like aud- audible ejaculations whenever he met a nice young lady. Go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't quite of the no, it was much kind more of fur comment, like amiable sort of but chap. So, he was so genuine genuinely delighted he just didn't care who knew uh, um, anyway it's worth checking out one of the many uh, Christie audiobooks read by Hugh as within a few minutes you will forget you are listening to a single voice narration such is his talent as a performer oh, that's great. Like, Hugh is such a nice man as well with a lovely wry sense of humour on a separate subject I mean he's listening to this thinking I don't even know fan, who Nick yeah, Briggs love is it. Love it. Um, but uh, I, I've worked with him a number of times and he's very um, he's very what's the word you know some actors you're very aware of them because they're talking all the time and they're telling stories Hugh's just very understated and quiet and you look over at him and he's just giving you a little look like <laughs> don't look at me please it's in my rider no um on a separate subject, could Nick update us on his plans for Alien England? We will be waiting two years to find out what happens next. All right. I'll tell you some stuff about Alien England. I was just looking at it the other day. It's um, uh, an audiobook thing that I wrote, and I just did the first episode as an audiobook with me reading it with some sound effects. Did you hear it? I did, yes. Did it was yeah. great. It was released under Red Ray Gun, wasn't it? Yeah, which so is this podcast, mate. Absolutely. Uh, just double-checking. Um, yeah, and um, so the thing about it is that it's about a sort of the day after tomorrow in Britain and there's an alien involvement thing, but it's also quite controversial about politics. And there was an element of the plot that given the whole business about the pandemic, it was very controversial. And so I've shelved it for a little while, but I'm starting to think now, I'm, I'm getting together the idea of doing it as a drama for Red Ray Gun. Um, so, yeah. I can't promise anything because I've got so much work on, but it is something that I, w- I would like to do and and perhaps get Benji involved in as well. Mm. There you go. So, yeah, that answers that. So, yeah, there will be more of Alien England one day, plus the fact that I've trademarked the title, so I've got to do something with it. It's a good one to trademark, actually, in fairness. It's that a is, good title, it's isn't it? I'm one, surprised yeah. no one else has used it. And if they do, I shall sue them. Hope you tackle some more <laughs> mystery series in the near future. Campion and the Mrs. Yeah. Bradley mysteries have to be contenders for future discussion, surely. You're not wrong. Surely. You're not wrong. Surely. 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 Don't call me surely. <laughs> um, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you both, retrospectively. Thank you. Thank you very much, retrospectively. Yeah. I'd just like to say um, a quick shout out for our good friend David Tremont, oh, who's recently, yes. yeah, he's, he's become a patron. Uh, he's uh, recently been voted the King of uh, New Zealand. In a break with the UK Can monarchy, New Zealand, guy. yeah, they, they've decided to adopt the lovely David as their new head of state. And if you don't believe that, well, I don't know what the world's coming to. I suppose uh, the only, the, the, you know, the, the good thing about having David Tremont as, as the head of state is uh, he's a fantastic uh, model builder, just makes the most incredible oh, models. Yeah. The good thing is he could build his own castle and kingdom. You know, he not can. many heads of state can do that. He can just say, do you know what? I fancy an extension on that roof there. I'll do that. Just kit bash it together. Brilliant. Kit bash it. Kit, I love it. Love that. He's love. a famous DJ, isn't he? Kit bash it. Hi, kit, kit bash it here. <laughs> So it sounds like a, an Anderson character, doesn't it? My name's Kid Bashit. Oh, dear. Right, Nick. You know what time it is? What? It's time for Shelley. Shelley time. Shelley Vision. Okay. Hello, Shelley. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hi, boys. <laughs> How are it's you? It's all very amusing. Ah, yes, I am good. I'm good today. Jolly I good, think I'm Jolly. a bit pink. I look a bit pink, don't I? I, I, look at, I don't know. My light, my lighting changes constantly. I don't know how to figure it out. I think I should just go in the bl- in the dark, and that'll be the best way for me to <laughs> We'll show. just imagine that you're there and you're not. <laughs> yeah. That's all we need, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> just my glasses reflecting, and that's all we need. <laughs> oh, the old glasses routine. <sighs> oh, dear. Oh dear. Well, so uh, anyhow, we're doing what what we what we've been yeah, watching. Yeah, what we we've been watching. Yeah. What have we been watching? I just yeah I. Uh, 
I just wanted to say before we go into the formal what we've been watching of course yes. I did force the two of you to watch a film on Netflix called The History of Future Folk Hondo Hondo who's gonna uh, let me explain <laughs> I was I was on Netflix and I just needed to watch something and just you have those moments where you just go no 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 Every day. no 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 I don't want to oh and I looked at all the movies and I was going oh no no stop suggesting that no no and then I saw this thing which just looked rubbish from the artwork the history of future folk I mean what kind of title it's is like that it's like a devo band yeah, that's right they got a thing bucket, with the, bucket with the heads. red buckets yeah bucket head space suits and uh, I just thought that looks terrible so I'm going to see how long it takes me to switch it off so I pressed play and I just thought oh, this guy going down into the bowels of some nightclub I thought this is terrible then he puts on his his spacesuit and he goes engage and I thought what? and then he starts doing this weird act and then I was okay with that and then the title comes up and he's having a little scene with his daughter and I thought oh not a kid scene and then the daughter was really good wasn't she she was really she was good amazing. little actress and I thought this is I think some good minds are behind this and then watched it and it, I thought it was lovely and sweet well and in the one of the very first people we see in the movie is D. Snyder from Twisted Sister? Is that, oh, him? Is that who that is? The, the night <laughs> you know about it? Yes, no that was way. D. Snyder. He's, he's great as well. He is great. <laughs> yeah, D. I used to know him years ago, and I used to call him my dawdler because he was the slowest person to get around to doing anything I asked him to do. I'd be like, D, I need you to send me this audition by 12 o'clock. Like, 3 o'clock would roll around, and he'd send it to me, and I'd be like, Really? Really, is time not mean anything to you? So yeah, as soon as I saw, as soon as the camera flashed by the bar, I went, "That's D. Snyder." Wow! <laughs> and then so he becomes a yeah. character later on, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he's you know. great. He was actually like, I commend him in his acting ability in that he was very good. And I love the fact that he, because there's all, I mean, we can't really tell you the whole story without no, ruining it. No. I mean, the thing is, go to Netflix and watch it immediately and send the history uh, and of future folk. F folk. F folk. 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 I don't speak with a British accent. I don't <laughs> well, say do folk. A, Americans don't say folk music, do they? They say folk, folk. do they? Folk. 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 Now it sounds like you're swearing. Yeah. It's like a, a, a long O. Folk. Folk. Well, now you're all swearing. Folk. Folk music. <laughs> folk. Folk. I suppose Americans folk. do say folk. I don't say folk, folk music. Yeah, you do say folk, folk music. music. Yeah, you say folk yeah, music. Folk. Yeah, folk. 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 Like say folk. 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 Yeah, we don't pronounce folk. the L. We just say folk. We don't folk. say folk. Yeah. Folk. Folk. You're folk and you're folk. woke. Well, we don't really say... Okay. No, Anyhow, I know it's a mean. great I, movie. If I do an American <laughs> accent, I can hear it. Folk. Yeah, you say folk, folk. music. Yeah. yeah. Folk, folk music. Folk music. Yeah. See, now folk doesn't mean anything to me. It's just no, a just gibberish a word because I've said it so many times. Folking folk off. But uh, don't be put off by the folk music thing because a lot of people don't like folk music, including myself, oh, actually. But it's so, so beautifully done. And there's fa my favourite scene in it, which not doesn't give anything away, is when the main character is playing the banjo and he does a medley of almost every famous song. Oh, Absolutely. Songs. Fan yeah. you, every, as it's going well, along, everything. you go, hey, that's that. And that's that. And that's that. Oh, and the other character's amazing. reaction to it, which is kind of more and more orgasmic and it gets funnier and funnier and funnier as he discovers music for the first yes. time. It's just... Beautiful. Yeah, I loved it so much that the very next night I started watching it again, got halfway through and thought, I've got to make my wife watch this. So I went to her and I met them. Normally when I say to her, do you want to watch something? She'll go, not really. I'm a bit busy. I mean, maybe next week or something. That's usually what happens. But there must have been an intensity in my eyes. And she said, well, what is it? And I said, it's really good. And I think you'll really love it. And she went, OK. And I thought, wow, it was such pressure. So <laughs> I rewound it to the beginning and watched it. And she did like it. She did like it very much. Which, as I said to Shelley, it's just as well, because otherwise I would have had to have divorced her. <laughs> would have been embarrassing. Yeah. I hadn't managed. I tried to persuade Ben to watch it, my 11-year-old, but he wouldn't. Um, he was going, no, I've got to play this skating game on the computer. Oh, okay. But he Priorities, kept, yeah. Dad. Priorities. He kept coming over and watching it. He kept coming over and watching yeah. bits and enjoying it. And Tony we've all Hawks been saying skater. Hondo around the house. Yeah. Hondo, Hondo is Hondo. the planet they come from. And they yeah. just say Hondo. It'd be a bit like us greeting each other by saying Earth. 
Yeah. I was thinking that <laughs> I think afterwards. We shall. I was thinking maybe Let's we should from now. now on. Yeah. Earth. Yeah. All but right. what I like about it is that it comes from a comedy act. They did this yeah. as a comedy act, and then they decided to make a film about the comedy act. But this film's I, like 10 years old, and they've, they've yeah. re-released yeah. it, haven't they? They've re-released it on Netflix, and it's obviously done quite well. Well, it's been on Netflix since 2017, I believe. It was released hmm. in 2011, 2013. I oh, I thought... Oh, yeah, 2012, somewhere. I thought it was. Somewhere oh, around that point, yeah. folks. Uh, well, the past. But yeah, it's... It's fantastic, and it and that it. I was actually surprised that it didn't pop up ever in my. You should no. watch this. Because and it's, I can't find it easily again. It hasn't even oh, come up. In, it's not weird. Doing the I have search, to... I when you told me to watch it, I was like, okay. So then I went in and you I was like type typing the in name. His, I, You have to go past the word history. Yeah. Because all only thing that was popping up was shows about or things that had history in the tag, not in the title, and I'm like. Maybe, and I kept thinking as I was each letter I typed I thought maybe it's not on my Netflix Ooh, maybe it's yeah, only the scare, on the British the Netflix and I literally was like oh well okay and and then all of a sudden I saw it and I went oh there it is so yeah it's I, like someone at Netflix has decided that no one should watch it so they just well, haven't the worst thing about Netflix such, just it's so since, cute the worst thing about Netflix and searching for anything is that they have this stupid way in which you have to go through the alphabetical form of yeah. writing something out as, a, as opposed to QWERTY or whatever other people use but it just seems so illogical because I have to really think about where the letters are whereas I know where mm-hmm. they are if it was just a oh QWERTY I see what keyboard. you mean oh yeah, yeah that's very annoying it's yes. very archaic but it is good but well, listen, you know, I feel bad that the, the, the history of future folk, folk, has uh, gate crashed. <laughs> it was good though, <laughs> as well. Has gate know. crashed this, but I just I had to I had to put it in there because it's been a, a revelatory moment of my life. Before we go on to the next uh, thing we're going to talk about, uh, I just like to say it's time for another quick shout out. This time for Hugh McElroy or McIlroy. Hey. Hugh, we can't remember how to pronounce your name. You have to send in a pronunciation guide. I bet you have already. Uh, I think he did, and I think. It's McElroy. Yeah, sorry, Hugh. I've... Sorry. Just <laughs> shut. Anyway, we are yeah, apparently Hugh is, <laughs> Hugh is known to all his friends as Hugh the Dream Catcher. Yes. Because he he carries a little dream catching sack in his anorak pocket, but only seems to find small rodents in it. Yeah, but then anyway. one can argue maybe maybe he dreams of small rodents and thus catches said dreams in said ah. sack, you see. Ah. You see, it's but he's of, too embarrassed to tell people that he dreams about small rodents. I mean, you know, yeah, very possible, very possible. I think there's a 12-step group he could join that would make it easier <laughs> for him. But I each a- step, you accidentally <laughs> step on a rodent. <laughs> <laughs> Until it's very they're all embarrassing. Gone. I had a very crazy dream last night. I had a dream that I was making a film. I had this idea for a film. It was a terrible idea. It was this idea. It was like, we're going to do right, World War II, but like if it happened in the modern age. So, like, people on, on you know, on twitter talking about the invasion of poland and and all the jets will be all the all the planes will be like fighter jets and in and like in the dream i was like yeah this is gonna be a fantastic idea like it's It'll gonna look be great the end of the world basically. and then i woke up and i was like god what a terrible dream what a terrible <laughs> idea who comes up with that um, there's a germ of uh, an interesting thing there about the whole thing with people how could World War II have happened with social media? It probably couldn't have done. But anyway, let's move past such weighty issues. Uh, should we, uh, Shelley? Do you want to talk about the what you've been watching stuff? Uh, sure. If you want me to start, I am. Is going that to okay? Start. That is. That is absolutely okay. And, Queen's and I'm Gambit, start, wasn't it? It was Queen's Gambit and Space Force. Those were the two that I I mentioned as my. You didn't mention Once Shits I'm Creek. Loving. I mentioned Shits Creek. No, that was Creek. Benji. Okay. Benji. Actually, Shits, Shits Creek was on my list. I okay. just didn't mention it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, um, I'm going to start with Space Force just because it. we were talking about space and Earth and planets. Um so for those of you who have not seen Space Force or heard about Space Force, it's on Netflix. It stars Steve, stars Steve Carell um, as a four-star general who gets assigned to lead this new, the sixth, ver- uh, whatever. There's the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard, and now there's the Space Force. <laughs> and so um, it's it's a silly little show that's based in reality sort of um however (laughs) realistic we want to consider the necessity of having a space force um 
But it's just it's it's just this very it's it's so well written it's so well cast the, all, every single character you just when they're on screen you're you're riveted by each and every one of them John Malkovich who is He's always an there, absolute he? icon He's is a dumb. fantastic in this just I mean you you I couldn't love him more if yeah so um is he so, yeah, like the, just, is he like the boss. He's the chief scientist. Oh, that's right. Yes. I He's have seen it, but it was scientist. ages ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, if you haven't seen it, you must see it. It's, you There's know. There's such it, antagonistic it, relations between oh, people out there. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it, and, and the, the fact that it's based in reality, sort of, the, the, the allusions to POTUS, they don't actually ever say POTUS's name, but they allude to his twit you know, when he announces things, he does it on Twitter and 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 what, and the, and the, <laughs> Wonder the big who they thing, could be talking about. Right. It's it's unimaginable. But the funny thing is is that that uh POTUS had POTUS had tweeted that he wanted uh boobs on the moon. And <laughs> The funny somebody the, the 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 Secretary of Defense says, well, obviously that was a typo, and he meant boots on the moon. But it's just so all these little little things that happen throughout, you know, in each episode that that are little like jabs at the the way POTUS runs his administration and Ran. whatnot. Uh. <sighs> Let's let's yeah, let's take yeah. politics out yeah, yeah, and then oh, we're not yeah. getting political. Folks. Yeah. So anyhow, um, Space Force amazingly cast. It it's just little half it's hour episode. A thing of beauty. Well. It's yeah. I I rewatched it this past week because I thought I did watch it. I did know it, but you know what? I want. I really want to be able to. If anybody had any questions, I wanted to be able to answer them. So I rewatched it, and all of a sudden it was over, and I was like, Oh my god! I hate oh, when okay. that happens. <laughs> How like, many episodes? It's 10 episodes for this first series, and then there'll be 10 more coming out soon, I believe. Oh, wow, um, good, good. The second series will be coming out. Uh, yeah, so it's just it's it's just a fun ride. I just saw it was on ride. there, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure whether to, to watch it or not, because I was thinking to myself, I'll find out from Shelley whether it's actually worth yeah. it on this week's show, and which, is, which is obviously yeah, it's, what I've done. You know, I, I, well, I'll be I'll be taking another look. I'll be yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's and and just in light of current world events and stuff, it's just nice to have something that's sort of real but sort of not, and sort of just poking fun. And it's just it's and Steve Carell, I just you couldn't I couldn't love him more either. So yeah, he is very he does no he wrong. <laughs> He is the king. And Lisa Kudrow. Oh, one of oh the, the, that's the, the, right. Yes, from just, Friends. Yeah, it, yeah she's, she's amazing. Everybody's amazing. So next. <laughs> um, should we go? Benji, do you want to do one? And then we'll go back to Shelley for her, yeah, her I'll, second I'll, one. I'll happily do one. What have yeah, I nobody wants to hear me here? all the blah, um, blah. Well, I'm just going will, for vocal variety. I mean, I'll tell you <laughs> exactly. what I will, will say that I, I watch actually. Is, um, so I have been told by so many people to watch The Expanse. Um, and I've been really kind of like not reluctant but as anybody knows me like I just don't bother to watch like things that sort of new and I just don't I like older things really um, but everybody kept saying watch The Expanse and uh, Tony who plays guitar for uh, for my band said you must watch it he knows all about space and he only li he likes his Star Trek but he likes things rooted in kind of scientific reality mm -hmm. and he said you'll like this because it actually takes space quite seriously and it's like quite you know, and I have to admit, I watched it. And I thought this is great. Like, it's a bit cheesy. Like, the acting's a bit cheesy. Is and it? Like that, Do you yeah, think? Like, I, think I've saw, I saw the first. Have you ever seen it, Shelley? Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't watched right. the this the newest series that just dropped. I think the third series. I haven't I haven't watched that yet, but I have watched it and I love it. I re I watched the first series. Uh, because someone warned me about it a year in advance saying oh have you seen it because it was obviously on something they were watching and then when it came to Netflix I went ah oh, yeah this is good and I really yeah. enjoyed it and then I had to wait a whole year for the second series and was absolutely gagging for it really enjoyed it and then Netflix stopped it and I'm not going on Amazon just to get The Expanse um, yeah. it's too much expense to get The Expanse <laughs> but it's great it's solid hard sci-fi isn't it yeah absolutely and there's there's you know and the ideas i mean i presume it was it a book before yes it's a series, series of, of books isn't yeah. It? yeah you know and you can tell Which are that quite different i've been told but but the, the essential things there you know the idea that you know that the hottest commodities are now you know water and oxygen 
Yeah. So yeah, you know that's exactly how well, it mankind is. Mankind has expanded into, um, into the into the solar system, really. Yeah, and scattered around, you know, Mar- Mars Mars dwellers and people who are just you know stuck on rocks mining and all the other stuff. But it's just done very well. And um, you know, I th- I think like the, who's you know the chap in the silly hat, who's like the main sort of detective. Oh, chap Thomas there. Jane. Yeah, I find him irritating. That's the actor, Thomas Jane. He, he seems a bit. It seems like a bit of a cliche character, but um, oh, I don't remember him. He drives the story. He's the the detective that um, God, I don't remember. shows up in the. I don't know anybody's names. The the main character guy, the one who helms uh, the the ship. Yeah. The, the ro ro roadie ro ro. What do they call I can't their remember. ship? Yeah, <laughs> anyhow, no, he, no, he no, shows no, up no. in his like alternate dreams reality thing, and he guides them when they all. go. Huh. Is that weird? That's that's the, the yeah. That's he's he's the one guiding them to. And that happens from the first series. Yeah, he's yeah. investigating the murder in the very 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 beginning of the girl. Oh gosh, gosh. Yes. And he wears the hat and he's got the shaved hair, the shaved yeah. sides of his head, yeah, and the big floppy right. hair. I've forgotten all about him. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I've been. I mainly think of the older woman, you know, who um, who's like important the the president. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. That's, that's She's who really I cool. remember from it. Isn't that weird? Yeah. That's Her funny. and some rather butch bloke. Yeah. Yeah. But, but know, do, when know, they the mu- when they go through guy. the barrier and the the captain of the roadie or I'm sorry, I'm I butcher names. I just I have the worst memory. The, ro- when it comes the roadie to butcher. Names. We'll call <laughs> him Kevin. <laughs> call him Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Um he who, uh, who's also in uh, the history of future folk. Yeah. Folk. Future folks. <laughs> Um, Peter Falk, but yeah, that's that's Thomas Jane is the actor. So, but he's very good, you know. I have to admit, for somebody that doesn't really, <laughs> somebody I really really like it 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 <laughs> But for somebody that doesn't like sort of moderny things that much and prefers to watch things that are a bit older, I thought it was great, and I will be watching more. I don't know when I'll have the time, but I certainly will endeavour to do so. Yeah, I'd like to get back into it. I just wish it would arrive on a platform that I can be bothered to pay for. Not anymore, Isn't mate. It? Amazon are funding it. Was it Jeff Bezos or whatever his name is? Bezos, yeah. He loved it so much that he said no. He we're, bought the we're, company. We're, yeah, he just said, we're having more of that. I want more of that. What, you discontinued it? Okay, how about we buy it and I'll just pay to have it made? And that's what he did. Well, no one's watching it, Jeff. It. I don't care. I'm <laughs> richer than God. He's like, do you pay taxes? You're a sucker. Um, you know, <laughs> the end of the day. But yeah, that that would be... That's, that's a good one, one to recommend, though. That's yeah. one, yeah. Is it available else? on DVD or something? Can I buy the DVDs? Oh, I, I mean, I would assume so, but I don't know. Probably directly through Amazon, um, you can get it, I'm yeah. sure. They'll get me one day, won't they? I hate being forced to... Every time I buy something from Amazon, I have to uh, I have to go through so much difficulty to avoid accidentally subscribing to Amazon Prime. I like Prime. I actually would argue oh. Prime is quite useful because you just get Whatever. just, it's just more money. I can't keep affording to spend all this money. Everything the next day is just the best. Like if you need to order, something... I don't need things the next day. I, don't I need, do because I'm I don't impatient. Need the <laughs> Expanse is available as DVDs on Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, no, I might buy them through Amazon. I don't. I don't want to subscribe to their TV though. It's good. I like it. And you can of watch course loads it's good. Of- they have. Loads, they've got more money than God, and they can afford to buy everything that's good. So the of only, course the they get everything, and they convert. Cover, you know, and they're building a business empire. They they want this planet to be renamed Amazon. You know, in a couple and of hundred years' time, Hondo. we probably will be the planet Amazon. Hondo. Yeah, Hondo. That's there's when great, I'm going to Honda. There's a great game um, out. Uh, was out a while ago. A while ago called the Outer. The what's it called? The Outer. Uh, oh, I can't even remember the Outer Worlds. And the the idea behind that is that every planet is basically just is owned by the corporations. And everywhere you go, and it's just, and it's beautifully designed because everywhere you go is so cheesy. You know, you arrive on a planet, and there you've got people there saying, um, "Would you like to buy this fantastic new hat to wear as you go around?" You know, it's the corporation would love it if you could do this. Well, that's you know? like all of our sports stadiums have been renamed for corp- the corporations that sponsor it. The Staples Center, isn't it? And all yeah, places like Staples the Pepsi, Center, the Pe- Pepsi, Pepsi Arena, yeah, and, and yeah, it's it? just. 
the Skittles and oh, the Red yeah. Raygun Arena. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nick's, Nick's like, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Let me just whiz through mine quickly because otherwise this will be the longest podcast in creation. I added the Mandalorian because I suddenly realised we were watching that. We've got uh, Disney for free for two months through Fortnite because my son plays Fortnite. So we're doing the Mandalorian not fast enough. I'm really I would have watched the Mandalorian like all of it in three days, but my son and my wife are just too slow, and it's really killing me. I, I would like to be getting. I've it only over watched with. like half of the first series of it, and then haven't seen have, any of it yet. I've been a, waiting for my daughter to watch it, and it's the same thing. It's like I. Oh, it's really annoying. You, you just yeah. So I haven't watched any of it yet. Now it's going to be like season ten, and I, I'm still. Well, I already they've know done everything. two seasons, haven't they? I know. And, I, and yeah. I've um, uh, and I. I the funny thing is, watching it in this weird, old-fashioned, staccato way, I didn't realise when we flipped from one season to another. And I said, God, was that the season climax? And suddenly, it didn't really seem like much of a climax to me. Um, I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm enjoying it as much as I enjoy any Star Wars. I, li- I like it because it's a big sci-fi thing with shoot-em-ups and spaceships. Mm-hmm. And it's like a Western, and I love Westerns. It's a real but, spaghetti Western, But I just it? can't... I can't get that enthusiastic about it. It's, it's too... Um, formulaic you know the cutie yoda thing that looks like a plastic toy i love baby and I yoda think nobody nobody it's a plastic speaks toy Ill of baby is it? Yoda. he has oversaturated everything everywhere yeah. you look it's baby yoda this baby yoda yeah. that or the right. child right. the child the but is, it is, it CGI, is it cgi is it cgi or is it a plastic puppet it's Cause both because it looks like a plastic it's mostly going to be a plastic puppet yeah it looks it's, like one I don't know, it's, uh, but it, I mean, and, and it's weird. I mean, the 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 CG involved in this is like witchcraft, isn't it? It's like magic because Nick Nolte plays a, a tiny alien, and Nick Nolte is a big old bloke, isn't he? So how did they do that? And the fact that magic. most of most of what you see is not there. I mean, it's quite incredible, and it's a fantastic achievement, I think. And it is compelling, and I am looking forward to watch more. Um, the, can I just uh, say really quickly a, a no, thing that no I think time. is amazing? It's all about my views and not yours. Uh, <laughs> the, yes. One thing amazing about um, the Mandalorian, from a technical standpoint, is they don't use green screen in it anymore. They've got they've no. got they've gone for LED screens. Everyone can just, see everything. That they're so acting cool. with. Yeah. So impressive. Oh, so they're not acting to a, t- a green tennis ball no, on a stick. No, they can see it all. They can't see oh. it quite as well as we can see it, but they can see it. And the director can. And, and it's moving around in real time as they're shooting it, all that CG stuff. Very clever. Very, it's really very, very remarkable. Hmm. Um, Evil Under the Sun. So, yeah, the, it's the, the movie with Peter Ustinov based on the uh, Agatha Christie Poirot novel. Uh, and it's. I suddenly realised I, I went and watched the um, David Suchet version, and realised how much of an outrageous adaptation the uh, the movie one is. The movie one's set, um, oh god, in the Adriatic, whereas the original, or certainly the David Suchet one, is set in Devon. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> it's an island just off the coast of Devon, but they have it, and the you know, and the the Evil Under the Sun movie has all the music of Cole Porter. It actually credits Cole Porter as the composer That's because cool. every That's single piece clever. of music is uh, a pastiche and version of a rearrangement of a famous Cole Porter song, and it's much more about um, musicals and showbiz, which the original is virtually not about at all. And it's interesting also that Diana Rigg in the original plays the murder victim and they really build her part up and she's this tremendously attractive, oversexed woman who's having an affair with a young man. And and they really make her character very detailed. In the uh, David Suchet version, you can tell that the actress playing that part, I hope she's not listening, yeah, she's very beautiful, <laughs> but she's not a good actor and they hardly give her any lines and she gets bumped off fairly soon. And you can tell in a lot of these British um, series, you know who's going to get killed because they're the least good actor. I think it was Jed Mercurio who broke the mould when he did um, his um, Line of Duty series where he always takes a really solid guest actor known to all British viewers and kills them at the end of the first episode. You know, use, the tradition in British in television is right. that the people who die are the worst actors because no one wants them to live long and no one wants to take the part. It's too small, so they can only give it to lesser-known actors. You know, the famous people don't want to take the small parts. Um, so, 
yeah, interesting and interesting to watch the British version as well, which also is called Evil Under the Sun and it's meant to be a sunny summer and it was clearly shot in a typical British summer, which was terrible. <laughs> and you can tell all the sunlight is coming from two sources, one massive reflector boards and two <laughs> um, grading of the picture later to make any bit of light appear to be warm. Sun. But you can see there's something about the actors' faces where they all look like they need a slap to make them warmer. They're all, they're just... They're just seconds away from their teeth chattering, you know. Oh, it is so sunny out here. <laughs> Give me a hot their, cup of cocoa, please. Their <laughs> lips are turning blue from hypothermia setting in. <laughs> Lovely day for a sunbed. But it's yes. a, just like that other Poirot we watched recently. It has great twist and everything. Really, nice. really good. So good, good fun. Um, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? No, I mean, you're going to talk about The Queen's Gambit, aren't you? Which I yes. absolutely adore. Oh, wow. Queen's Gambit. It took me a very long time to watch it. I kept seeing, you know, popped up. It was on my, every time I went on Netflix, oh, to get around to starting it. Yeah, I yes. see. Yeah. It was there. It was there. Everyone, I read it. I mean, every article, was, oh, Queen's Gambit, this queen. And I kind of, I'm this kind of, I get this stubborn streak where someone's saying, you need to watch this. I go, yeah. no, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Like us all, like us all. Yeah, no. we're with you. <laughs> so I, I finally said, uh, maybe it was an. I, I might have come across an article that finally said something about this that made me think. Okay, I'll watch it. Um, I'm not a chess player. I don't me know neither, anything yeah. about chess except for a pawn can move one space and the horsey moves in an L. I That's didn't even it. know. I didn't even know that. That's and I didn't all... know it was called the horsey. <laughs> <laughs> that is the technical term for the... Uh, I don't even know what it is. Is it the knight? I don't even know what it Where is. Where does the crowny move? It's the knight. It is the knight. Okay. So... Horsey. <laughs> I, finally, I finally sat down and watched this. And I... Every single episode in a row. I didn't even stop. Didn't I... Understandable. It was so compelling... And so amazing. And afterwards, or, or after any scene having to do with chess, I thought, I bet I would really, really love this to the whatever degree if I understood what the hell was going on mm -hmm. as far as the game was concerned. But as it turned out, you it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I knew because That's she, what the cleverness of how it's made as well. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, I'm sure if you know chess, it was the most, I, I read something that compared it to a sports movie, that it, if you found yourself clapping and cheering and rooting on someone playing chess, it's, that's how it was filmed, that's how they made it into not just boring chess pieces yeah, they, yeah they've made it now chess has become sexy hasn't it it's, oh, it's a huge, yeah. huge have you thing watched it over christmas by the way benjamin no have i what of course i've watched it i've start <laughs> to finish much the same yeah absolutely I, I, it's just it wasn't made in 1962 so i didn't think you'd be interested <laughs> it's yeah. set in 1962 Yay! <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. but no I, I, I loved it I, I thought it was superb you know I, I think everything about it it's just got class it's a bit it's got a bit of risky it's got fantastic acting in it mm, the story mm. is great and it's just wonderfully put together um everything about it i forced my sister and her boyfriend to watch it as well i don't know if they've got to the end but she thought it was great although she, i said i said i think this is the best thing on netflix this year to which she said she doesn't even think it's the third or fourth best of the year i'm never though. talking to your sister i know i was quite shocked i was like really i was like this is great better than some of the rubbish you watch. i've got two um, little anecdotes about this uh one uh the man i buy sandwiches from at cafe bean uh he uh we were talking about things to watch and he said uh and i said listen if you want a recommendation you got netflix have you said oh yeah i've got netflix i said um uh, watch the the Queen's Gambit. He said, oh, "I don't like those royal family things, like the Crown and stuff." I said, "It's about a girl who plays chess." And he went, "Oh, right." I said, "No, but perfectly understandable." If you haven't heard, he said, "I've never heard of it. Never heard of it at all." I'll give it a go. I love the fact that he thought it was something about a royal family. Uh, Steph, my wife, uh, I recommended to her that she should watch it. I said, "It's really good," but we rarely agree on these things. But she watched it. <laughs> And I, 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 over her shoulder, I occasionally looked over while I'm watching BritBox and she's on Netflix, um, you know, and she, and I went, oh, 
that's interesting. Blimey, you're in the last episode. She said, am I? Oh, cool. So she watched it. <laughs> and then I saw the credits rolling. And she turned to me and she said, that's not it, though, is it? And I said, what do you uh. mean? I said, well, what happened in the last scene? She said, oh, she's just started playing chess with an old man. I said, yeah, that's the end. She went, oh. So for Steph, it didn't seem like the end of the story, <laughs> which to me, I thought was a superb ending. It was, and was perfect, so, yeah. so clearly the end of the story, but to her, not at all. She was. Yeah. She thought there's going to be another episode. What when she goes out for Back a drink with the old man or something? Like it returns to to the United States and the to the the glow the 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 glow and the glory of being the chess master. Like yeah, it's it's yeah. It's I, I it it worked perfectly for me. It was just it was just enough. It was all just. It was I just agree. Like, it's, it's beautiful. A bit of a, isn't it? I love show. the music in it. So. It's got a great, oh, it's got yeah. a great soundtrack, oh, yeah. you know. I think that the only thing I would say about it that's that it's one of those ones where it's really annoying because you have to tell people like when you when you first start watching it, like keep keep stick with it because it changes midway because it's you know it starts off she's in the orphanage and all that business. You've got like kind of two episodes of her when she's young before she then. Oh, I thought that was beautifully done though. Oh, I was, was almost dreading her growing up. I thought I think I'm going to prefer the kid, but but uh, they were all brilliant. But they were yeah. all brilliant. But what I mean for like for some people, they might be expecting one thing and and suddenly don't get it, or they might get so into one idea that they can't change to another. Because some people just like things how they are. But no, I think it's wicked, absolutely. There were quite a few British yeah. actors in this, weren't they, as well, playing Americans? Oh, yeah. yeah, a lot yeah. of that going on. Which is um, all the Harry, uh, uh, the Second Doctor's grandson. Yes, yes, yes. What's Harry Melling. Name? Yep, that's correct. Yeah, the Dursley yeah. himself. He's yeah. great though. He's great in everything. He's got a fantastic yeah. face. I don't know what you're talking actor. about. You you know um, he's related From to Second Harry Doc- Harry Patrick Melling. Troughton's great a uh, grandson, Harry Melling, is in this. He's the the I don't know character name again. He plays, he's the one who he, gets his teeth fixed. <laughs> you know the what you know in the the second or he third moves episode in with she, her. she she fa- she faces is that, that. Is that Patrick Troughton's grandson? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I had yeah. no idea. Well, he's a very, yeah, he very good actor. He plays Dursley in all the Harry Potter movies. Oh, I don't watch those. They're great films. You've got to yeah. watch Harry Potter. I'm not interested in Harry Potter. I mean, I have seen them. They've been on in our house, but I can't. I was going to say you have an 11 year old son. Yeah, yes, yeah, he's seen, seen Harry Potter. <laughs> I've, I've seen them all, all bits of them in the wrong yeah. order, so I've no yeah, idea anyhow, what's going on apart from so the fact Patrick that it's Patton's boring. So Patrick Troughton's grandson is in it. Uh, oh. uh, t- uh, Thomas Brody. Um, yeah, he is. If you push me to criticise any element of it, I, it's Thomas Brody, thanks to whatever his name is. Yeah, uh, I'm not a great fan of his work. Well, he he was the voice on of Ferb in Phineas and Ferb, so he was an icon in my household. He was, he was the okay. From well, I withdraw. <laughs> I withdraw that remark. Then you listen, must take it back. <laughs> listen, guys, we've got a lot to get through, and this podcast is getting longer and longer. Can I yes. mention Salvation? I'll mention it quite quickly. It's a story about an asteroid coming to hit Earth. It's, um, I think, executive produced by the guy who now does all the Star Trek stuff, and it is uh, uh, compelling but crass and soap-like. <laughs> Uh, and I don't recommend it, but I will carry on watching it. It's got all sorts of... The guy who ends up in Picard playing a guy who's got loads of holograms who have different personalities. You know the guy, the spaceship captain in Picard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's in it playing a sort of British genius. You know, And there's something deeply annoying about him as an actor, I find. Um it probably is because he's just so good looking it just irritates me but he's pretty (laughs) bloody good you know Um, and uh, it is just I I actually do watch an episode or two of it just to let me know what you think it is it's pap but it is it's you know it's an interesting sci-fi idea but it is written like a soap you know obvious tricks to keep you watching okay interesting what we got left well, I mean, I, I mentioned Shit's Creek because it was quite. It seems quite a, wrong that we're allowed to say that title. It's it, it is. It's one of those ones. It's everything I thought I would hate, and I was sort of mm. tired. That is one what evening. is most people's problem with it is the title. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's why? got nothing to do with the title. It's, it's just the type. It's just the type of program that I loathe, and I and I was really tired oh. one evening, and everybody else was watching it and wanted to watch it. So I was like, okay, yeah, fine. Sat back, eating my pita chips, a bit of hummus, got a beer in my hand, 
and I just thought oh this is really good and it's about it's a really it's just it's the way it's all put together it's about a family who are really really rich they're all like you know celebrities in their own rights and basically they get screwed over the dad gets screwed over in a business deal and they're left with absolutely nothing their house is comp every belonging they own apart from the clothes on their on their back uh, have been repossessed and taken away and the only thing that they do have is that he bought his son uh, this place for a joke years ago called Shits Creek because of the so name of it that's a yeah, joke. yeah so you, you you own Shits Creek sort of thing you know <laughs> so you know, the, the fact that it ha, sounds ha, ha. like poo exactly is, is, is part is of the, the joke. whole point and so yeah. they have to relocate to to Shits Creek and and live there and to to try and work it all out and it's just it's just funny it's just because you know it's such a, a rubbish place and all the and all the characters like the mayor of Shits Creek is like this horrible disgusting man like a real <laughs> horrible guy you know um, played by <laughs> Chris Elliott who is He's so fantastic good. but it's just it is it's one of those things I didn't think I would like it but it's so it's just the way that I think it's the characters they're all such great characters and they're all played brilliantly and the good thing is the episodes are 20 minutes long so like you can just yeah. bosh through it really quickly it's really like non-committal um but it's just great. I honestly, I was I was so surprised to like it, and I think it's because they're so fast that you can just nip in and watch one. But um, I recommend it. I think you give it a try, Nick, because it's you can't help but laugh, and they're such defined. Characters. I must give it a go, and it's on Netflix, is it? Yeah, it's Netflix. It's just you can't help but sort of like it. It's yeah, I like it. I dig well, it. Well, I, I sort it. of love it. It's my favorite thing ever so much so and I think I said this last week I have yet to watch the very last episode oh yeah because you can't let it go yeah. and you don't want to read the last chapter I have yet to it watch were. it yeah, yeah. can't do it I just can't do it I, I totally I, identify with that yeah. I, it's quite cool it's a family affair isn't it that's the other thing uh, I forgot to say just yes, really quickly Eugene Levy and Dan Levy play father and son and I don't know if you know this Benji but the, the girl who plays the waitress in yep. the diner is also uh, he, she's his Eugene Levy's daughter um, and, and Eugene Le Levy and Catherine O'Hara, the the two of them Twyla, together, isn't it? yes, the, the the two of them together, it's they, you could not have a more perfect pairing, and that has been something that they have they have worked together for decades. They started together in Second City in um, in Canada, and they were on SCTV and like all these amazing movies, waiting for Guffman. Um, I can, of course, I, none of them are coming to my brain right now, but they just the, the, absolutely, hands down, just watch it. <laughs> it is good, yeah. David's David's my favorite. He's a dude. Oh, he's I'm in so, love with he's him. So, so, so funny. In love so with funny. him. Yeah, Nick, and, and sorry, yeah. If, David. I hope it's what's not, the matter, Nick? I don't know whether it's urgent or not. Oh, you're getting summoned by a family member. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, then, if, okay. if it is, I think we should let's wrap up then. So, yes. um, we haven't spoken about Gangster Squad. Have you got time to speak about Gangster Squ Squad, though? <laughs> well, That's the question. sum it up That's, in I three words. We're waiting for you to sum it up. I yeah. don't know anything about it. I've never heard of it. Well, I've never heard Who of Gangster Squad. Who recommended it? I, I didn't am, recommend I'm, it. I've never seen Gangster Squad in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it is. What even is Gangster Squad? I from? think Colin Smith is having a little joke at our expense. He's put it. He's put it underneath a picture of um, um, Special Branch. <laughs> well, there, there's a film called Gangster Squad. Interestingly enough, um, <laughs> ever, what, what a joker! Um, it's, <laughs> All right. Did he send the the cover already? And that's how you what you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. Yeah. Oh, what a dude! Yeah. What a dude! All right, <laughs> Gangster Squad. Maybe I said it. Maybe I, maybe I, thought, I said it I as a laugh the, or something. I thought the Zoom call had frozen. <laughs> we're all looking at each other like, okay, like, no. like Program called Gangster Squad. Well, our special Nick branch Nick. anyway with George Sewell and um, um, Pat Squad. Patrick Mower. He's not Gangster <laughs> Squad. Love it though. Why not? Okay, well, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go then. What are we going to do next we, time? Any ideas? We yes. ran out of time for Gangster Squad because we don't have time to watch it because none of us have seen it. <laughs> so next time... Trust in me on this one. We are going to do Beasts 1976 Episode 1 Special Offer. So get ready for that one. That's going to be fun. So as we get close to the microphone here, yes. as I say, uh, 
From me, Benji C, it's good B. And from me, Nick B, it's good B. And from me, Shelley, it's bye. Pressing stop now. Ka-chunk. <gasps> he did it. I love it. I love the anarchy. <laughs>